Hey guys, Alex from 7th Hour Films, back again with Better Call Saul as I adjust myself in my seat. Last time on Better Call Saul, we had Namaste, where basically, let's see, uh, Howard wants Jimmy to work at HHM, uh, which uh, by all accounts is a complete bra move, um, and Jimmy kindly responds by throwing bowling balls into his yard to bust up his car. Okay. Uh, Kim wants to... Uh, wants to save uh, Everett Acker. And will do anything. And has enlisted Jimmy to help. And he was able to convince Mr. Acker that he would be his legal counsel. By showing him a picture of a man fucking a horse. Meanwhile, uh... Mike is still dealing with crap and uh, got into a fight, got stabbed, and then he woke up somewhere else, uh, what we can assume is Mexico because of the color grading and everything, but I don't know. It's weird. Um, was there anything else? I feel like there was something else, but I can't think of it. There was no, no Lalo, no... Oh, uh, Hank and Gomi were uh, going and finding the dead drops and uh, got most of the perps except the last one. And uh, Gus was uh, being apprised of it, of the situation, while Lyle was furiously scrubbing. So, yeah, that was basically it. It's kind of a weird off episode, but still good, and I'm curious to see what's going to happen in this one, definitely. So, uh, with that said, why don't we just go ahead and jump right into this episode of Better Call Saul. Here we go. I love that not only did they give the translation of that, but they also, uh, they also put how many miles that is in the subtitle. That's funny. Oh my god, look at that little thing. Oh hey. That's the car you drive? 1130 Arroyo Vista. Is there a problem? Well, I mean, is that where we are? Oh. Uh. It's always been 1240 Arroyo Vista. 1240? Uh, change some numbers. My says it's 1240. 1240 Arroyo Vista. Come on, all we're talking about are some missing house numbers. Nah, but the lawyer I has a point. A oh, that's John DiMaggio. I literally saw his name in the credits, then Everybody I looked at his face like, oh. Oh yeah, that's him. Once he yelled, I was like, oh yeah, now, now I hear John DiMaggio's voice. The lawyer Acker hired, it's Jimmy. Jimmy. You're Jimmy? He saw now. How did that happen? Jimmy's been doing some very aggressive marketing. Looks like Acker picked up on it. <laughs> That's a lie. Okay, so what? Although, I guess it was pretty aggressive. This fellow saw you for the killer you are, and he went and hired Jimmy specifically to take you away from us. Uh. Kevin, up. But how would he I know? Say, I think that's very unlikely. Trust me on this, Cam. I know a scam when I see one. Uh, okay. No disrespect. Bro. I'm sure your associate's more than capable. Dedicated to Max. Oh. Uh, Howard? Hello, Howard. Yep. Hi, Jimmy. Oh, the job. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, hey, I've been thinking of nothing else, really. Glad to hear it. Man. Any conclusions? Patrick Fabian's uh, feet no, wiki points are really going up right now. Reflecting Over here like this, and he says... Wait. He sits like that? Yeah, he's, he sits to the side. He's a side sitter. No. I guess so. Okay, well, you never told me that he was a side sitter. And that... Does that... Is gold. Uh, go, go uh, on. Okay. Okay. So he's. There I'm a half side the, sitter right now, but that's uh, just because of how I'm angled. I'm not gonna let him. Wait, do deprive... the 
I'm not going to imitate him. Yes. Come on. Give me a nibble. I mean, the, he's a good old boy, right? So do <laughs> he talk like this? Uh, no. 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 Ding, it, dang, do. It's, it's, uh, it's more of a... It's more like lawyer comes in, crazy comes out. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. I need call center real bad. Of course, Kevin. Wait, are you being me? Yes, this is you. This yes, is a weird I'm role cool. play. Uh, okay. She is so I'm not confused. Let him. Would you care to take a shower with me? Well, shoot. I believe I would. You okay? That was weird. Back to Mike. What the hell is happening now? What's going on here? <laughs> oh, well, more John DiMaggio. So what about it, Doctor? Well, at a glance, I'd say these pieces are likely contemporary. Oh, Jimmy That's planted stuff. You're not going along with this. Seriously? It's the law. I have to make a call. Make a call. This sheriff doesn't want to do anything. Uh. Yo, I am so more invested in this character knowing it's John DiMaggio. Like, it's just fun. Staff, you're good with regulatory law. He's claiming there's a flaw in the original land <laughs> from 1846. Pat, you better drop everything else. He's oh claiming our prime contractor is an escaped felon. You can't be serious. <laughs> and all of this, I assume eventually, Kevin Wachtel's just gonna be like, it's not worth it. And Everett Acker's more than willing to let the to let Saul Goodman do it. What is he doing? What is this? Is he making a chemistry thing? Officer, radiation's borderline. We got wow. small samples. <laughs> Go make a call. Do I have to ask? I'm gonna have to, uh. <laughs> you know. You know. Better safe than sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thinks, who thinks of this? Mad lad. All of that. God damn it. How? Why would so many people go there? What if you don't build the call center, or not at that location at least? Ooh. And have rich. Certainly you're holding all Have the, the idea. There's nothing to delay. The other side's the one spending money with no hope of recovering their expenses. That. Hmm. Wait. So. You give up. What? I understand there's a viable alternative site. You make the switch, and you've won. No, well, I, I'm glad that Rich is there to to use this. But it means giving up. Honestly, it means letting Everett Acker win. My dad did not raise me to run from a fight. Kevin, we're not I'm not going to roll over and let some low-life shyster bully me off my land. No offense, Kim. He's got one lawyer. I got a room full of the best there is. Here's what we're well. going to do. You're going to figure out a way to get them off my property. That call center's not moving one goddamn inch. Shit, he's pissed. Yo, this is when you get a, you know, you're relieved of command. That's a terrible decision. There's always another play. What uh, other play? No, Jimmy, you bastard. You put an idea in her head. Or what's the other what's the other play? We go after Kevin Wachtel. Gets nasty, Ooh. gets personal, gets dangerous. Shit. Okay. No. Okay. Jimmy, you corrupting bastard. That should have just been it. Uh. 
Oh, that actually looks very lovely. Oh, that's a terrible place for your phone. Stab wound or no. Well, I wonder how long it's been for him. Yeah. Hey, it's me. <laughs> yes, uh, it is. Great. Uh, this is not like that other thing, okay? Um, <laughs> it's a straight piece of oppo research. This is a lawyer hiring a PI. What do you say? So you're back to being a lawyer. Yeah, yeah totally legit. So, yeah. Did I mention it's a paying gig? Not available. Say again. No. Dang it. Man, this would have been a great time to start that, but... I mean, he's in Mexico. Oh, shit's leaking. Oh, uh, he's gonna start fixing shit. Oh, hey, the nail salon. You got this guy where? Same place as you. So it's like some kind of underground Craigslist. <laughs> it's just a guy who knows people oh they people hired a, a certain type nah. he's Man, very discreet he... so you didn't get Huel wait a minute oh hey that's the guy from season one I thought I was going to a law office you know those things are full of parasites uh, yeah, duly noted. Uh, the conference room is in back. Yeah. That's, uh... Yeah, that's the guy that Mike beats up in season one. It's Trevor from GTA, right? I did GTA, the right? up as tasked. And? Snake eyes. Bupkis. Not, a uh, guy squeaky clean. That's impossible. He's a lot calmer. Everybody's got something. Not this time. You got an Eagle Scout with a six-figure income. Wow. Arrests? That is very rare. That's the home office. I spent an extra four minutes opening the floor safe. Nothing but life insurance policies, a couple of rings, and a commemorative half dollar. The guy's old school. No computers, motel art on the walls, paperwork on his desk. What kind of paperwork? <laughs> he is a lot more calm than he was in season one. We grab him, put him in a bag, and we take him out to the desert. Yeah, we're now, done here. At the end we're of done. the day, the banker's giving you everything you're after. All right? And we're done. No, 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 look, look, look. You get keys to the kingdom. Okay, Guaranteed. Sergeant Slaughter, back to the paintball field. Okay, the grown-ups need to talk. Let's go. No. All right, that's fine. I am just providing options All right, for you. Just the way out. Okay. Exit through the gift shop. All right. Yeah, don't touch anything, please. I will not. <laughs> uh, what if you do find something, though? What? What is it? Ah, uh, there is something good. Well, it's nice to see that guy again. You know, Mesa Verde is fully informed of any potential conflicts. Kevin signed off himself. Still, I think you're going to need to take a break. Okay. I don't understand where this is coming from. Don't you? Sometimes the less said, the better. And why is that? Do we have to? Yes, we do. Oh. Rich is a smart man. All right. Smarter than Kevin Wachtel. First, I had to twist your arm to get you down to Duke and Carry for the eviction. Then you put the full court press on Kevin to change sites. That doesn't work. And abracadabra, your boyfriend's opposing counsel. And I'm sorry to say, I'm just not buying it. Damn. Rich ain't no fool. Rich? Rich! Hold on! What are you saying exactly? Oh, are you gonna do this here? Can we go in a room? Let's talk in my office. You are accusing me of something. Oh, God. Go ahead and say it. Oh, God, we're doing this out here. Please tell me why I would risk everything for some squatter. Why? I don't understand. Are you, are you trying to protect the firm from what? Okay. Went out there and made a scene. Oh, 
Uh, man, the thoughts that must be going through his mind seeing this. As far as the people here are concerned, I am the doctor's friend, nothing more. They have no idea you financed the whole place. I prefer it that way. The anonymous benefactor. Hmm. And is that supposed to balance the scales? Make up for everything else you do? Damn. It makes up for nothing. I am what I am. Nah. At least he owns it. What is this place? Call it a memorial. Is this where Max is for from? What? It seems to me that you are at a crossroads. You can continue as you are. Drinking. Estranged from your family. Brawling with street hoods. Work for you is a button, man. I'm in a war. I need a soldier. Hmm. So I'm gonna work for one drug dealer killing other drug dealers. That's your idea of a choice. You know better. You have met them. You know what they are. Nah. Meeting the Salamancas. Yeah. Lalo and Hector. And you are so Tuco. very different from them. Why me? Because I believe that you understand. Understand what? Revenge. Oh, shit. That's why we're here. I mean, he does. Damn, all right. Alrighty, that is episode five. Dedicated to Max. So, I'm like 100% positive that town is where Max is from, was from. That makes sense because, again, you in my rewatch of Breaking Bad, we just got up to, we literally actually just got to the episode where they showed uh, Max's death uh, at the hands of the cartel, you know, Hector in particular. And, yeah, it's, so it's perfect timing to uh, watch that with this because... You know, in that episode as well, you also have Mike, who is, you know, a soldier. He is 100% with Gus Fring, you know? But it's been really interesting watching this because while there are a lot of episodes in Better Call Saul that show it, recently especially, because of the whole situation with Werner, that, yeah, it is interesting how at such a point of conflict between the two of them they do become you know very close allies you know but this is it this is to show why why gustavo fring is different from the salamancas and there is no better place than the town where his partner grew up and yeah a fountain a fountain too considering a fountain that flows in a very particular direction in the same way that honestly his blood was flowing into that pool you know man that is that is really really crazy but there it is there it is you know and i'm trying to think like um I'm trying to think, like, is there a parallel between Mike's story and the story of Jimmy and Kim? And I could slightly see one, you know, because we like doing that. We love... It's always fun to see the parallels between the, between the two stories on Better Call Saul. And I would say there's a slight parallel between Mike and Kim, where it's, you know, you can choose to remain where you are. For Mike, that's, you know, drinking, being estranged from his family. Um, and for Kim, I would say that's more of just the, you know, nice, you know, normal lawyer, I would say, you know? Where Jimmy has already sort of made that. But at the same time, Jimmy is also sort of, you know, he's not fully there, you know? Jimmy 
I mean, Jimmy holds on to Jimmy, you know? Jimmy is still holding on to Jimmy, and as long as Kim is there, he will hold on to being Jimmy, you know? He has not fully committed to being Saul Goodman yet, you know? And eventually we do see that, because he does in Breaking Bad, and Kim is nowhere to be seen in Breaking Bad, you know? So, but Kim is also sort of at that point where it's like, well, you can just be, you know, I would say, and again, this is just a very slight parallel, I would say, but I guess it's the parallel of becoming who you are supposed to be, and for Mike and Saul, for Mike and Jimmy, it's becoming Mike and Saul from Breaking Bad, you know? The problem with Kim, at least from an audience perspective, is we don't know what that means for Kim, you know? Kim is not in Breaking Bad, you know? Kim is not in Breaking Bad, and that is, I mean, that is something, you know? So it's left way more open what will happen to her, you know? Like, she just went and stood up to, you know, Rich Schweikert in front of everybody, but I don't know. Was that a good idea? Was that good to do that? But she's trying to retain her client, but I mean, but I mean, it's Kim also sort of at this crossroads of, you know, do you just, do you try to be the, the lawyer hero or do you just stay the lawyer for the big company, you know? And she's had Mesa Verde. She's had Mesa Verde since season two, right? It's been so long having Mesa Verde, but I mean, it's, it's hers. It's her client, but at the same time, she realizes that's not the work she wanted to do. It's the work that pays the bills, but not what she wants to do. You know, and if anything, if anything, you could also say the crossroads being, you know, do you keep scamming with Jimmy? You know, do you keep going with that slipping Jimmy? And it is a dangerous thing when, yeah, some people can figure it out where some people can figure it out. You know, Kevin Walk tells over here like. Well, I, I can smell a, I can smell a scam, you know, from a mile away, and it's like, you're literally getting the wrong scam. You are being scammed, but it's the wrong scam that you're calling out, you know. But, but, the person you can't do that to, is Schweikert. He knows. He he figured it out, you know. You laid into Everett Acker. You felt bad. You tried to get them to move it. Then Abracadabra, your boyfriend is over there representing him and causing all these problems, you know? There is a conflict. And in fairness, he is trying to protect Kim. He's like, look, whatever you're doing, you know, if Jimmy's gonna go do that, fine. But you need to be off of this or, you're, or you might get in trouble, you know? I don't even know if he's necessarily saying, hey, why don't we, you know, you need to stop this. You need to stop what Jimmy's doing. But it may even just be, hey, you can't, you are risking way too much, you know? You're risking way too much for one old man, you know? So, okay, I could sort of see parallels. And I don't know, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just sort of popping that off uh, the top of my head. Maybe there's no clear basis for it but i would say there's some there you know so yeah <sighs> crazy stuff i will say i do just like watching jimmy just go fucking things up you know i love john dimaggio being in this like you know john dimaggio i mean the what i would mainly know him from 
is uh, being Jake on uh, Adventure Time. But I mean, yeah, obviously, um, he plays uh, Bender, played Bender on Futurama and everything. So you know, great, great voice actor, um, and he's done you know probably countless other voice roles. But honestly, I, I like seeing him in this. Like, I think that's really cool. And yeah, when I saw that, I was like, John DiMaggio. Wait, John DiMaggio, like the voice actor John DiMaggio? Well, what's he doing in here? And then as soon, like just after that, I just got a look at his face. And I was like, oh, he's right there. It's, there he is. That's crazy, you know? So that was, that was really fun. I liked that. Um, and yeah, it was once he yelled that I was like, oh yeah, that's John DiMaggio. Like, when he yells, you can definitely hear the John DiMaggio voice, you know? Ugh. So, I mean, there's there's some voice actors where even if they have you know, so many multiple characters, there is a lot, you know, there's similarities between their voices. Steve Bloom is one. Matt Mercer is another. And John DiMaggio definitely falls under that where it's like, yeah, you can definitely hear his voice, but it's always fun hearing his voice, even if it's not too different from the last time you heard his voice, so. But I love that. I love all those delays, the the radiation and stuff like that was really funny. Uh, and of course, Mr. Acker's, you know, he's more than happy to let that be delayed, you know? He's more than willing to let Saul do his, do his shenanigans, so... I love, though, probably the dumbest one of them all is the Jesus part, where it's just, oh, look, Jesus has manifested in the side of his house, like, really? Really? Uh, and yeah, all the, who cares, like, like, look, I'm not, I don't know, like, I'm not, I'm not a religious person like there are people that are like just like super religious you know there are people out there that are like super religious but is that really something to like you know everybody like everybody get on a bus we're gonna go look at this i mean i don't know because i mean like there is like the like the fake church that they did for huel uh, in Kushada, like, there was the fake church where it's like, you know, oh, well, we're all gonna get some Chada buses and the whole congregation's gonna come to the trial. Like, I guess I can understand that, but it's like, it's literally just like, it's just a vague image of Jesus in the side of a, on a wall. You know? I don't know, though. I don't know. Uh, but I mean... Well, because, like, I understand, like, you know, in, in, like, Jerusalem, when there are, like, places that is like, oh, Jesus may have touched this place, you know, he may have stood at this spot and touched this rock or something, like, I can understand that, but that's because that's Jerusalem, you know? But a random... A random wall in the middle of New Mexico, I'm not sure about, you know? Eh, oh well. Um, I do love, though, it just shows that Jimmy's actually a one hell of an artist. Like, that's really interesting, you know? The fact that he was able to do that so convincingly, like, wow. That's a good job, I guess, you know? Fucking Jimmy. Uh, but yeah, but... They tried to change the location, but Kevin Wachtel will not give in to a bully. Yeah, a bully. Like, like, look, I'm, like, I'm kind of like, okay, well, you know, they're, you know, the law is on their side. They have the right to do that. It sucks for the old man, but they have the right to do that and stuff. So I, I wouldn't, like, be too bothered. But at the same time, it's like, when he's like, oh, I will not sit here and get bullied. Like, dude, you're the one kicking the man out of his house. Like, legality or not, you're the one who's doing that. Like, you're you're not the one being oppressed in your nice three-piece suit. In, in, you know, your nice lawyer building with your 28 banks that you need an entire dedicated call center for. You're not the one being bullied, you know? And I like, again, you know, that it was rich... Rich was the one who was like, hey, maybe we could do that. Because, yeah, I would think that if Kim 
was the one who was like, hey, I told you about the other side. We could go do that. Then I feel like that would be like, oh, wait a minute. Did you do this, you know? But, I mean, Kevin Wachtel is stupid. So, I mean, maybe Paige might have picked up on that. But Rich presenting that, I think that was good. But that also meant that Rich was aware of what was happening. And that definitely, uh, that definitely tipped him off, you know? And, uh, yeah, we got Trevor back, or Mr. X. Um, again, cool to see him. He was, he was a lot different. He was a lot more, uh, well, I don't know if humbled is the right word, but he wasn't as, he, he wasn't as, like, cocky or, you know, uh, as he was in season one. He definitely, I feel like, got humbled by, uh, Mike kicking the crap out of him, you know? So... And by kicking the crap out of him, I mean he took his gun and then hit him in the throat and that was it, you know? Uh, but yeah, good to see him again. And man, uh, it was so close where like Jimmy was going to be like, hey, I'm a lawyer, I'm going to hire you as a PI. But yeah, I mean, even, you know, if Mike was in New Mexico, maybe, but no, it's, I mean, the problem was, the problem was he was in Mexico, you know? I gotta say, though, that room, like, that room with that window and just the rain and some distant, you know, soft thunder, like, that's amazing. That has to be, like, an eight-hour video on YouTube, right? I mean, it has to be. I <laughs> I have, I have like, five of those saved in, like, a Watch Later playlist, uh, and I just cycle through them every night. Um, and I don't, like, I, I'll only watch for, like, a couple minutes or so before I go to bed, but yeah. Uh, I'm currently on, what is it, eight hours of snow in a log cabin. I freaking love that one. It's a little difficult when it's a little too hot. Uh, when it's too hot outside, it's hard for me to, you know, get into that. So I'll switch over to, like, rain or something. But, yeah, I love shit like that. Uh, so, yeah, that definitely has to be, that definitely has to be one of, you know, sitting, you know, in a nice cozy room with rain on the window. That's oh, got to be nice. Granted, there was also rain coming through the window, but luckily Mike fi uh, Mike fixed up that. So yeah, and yeah, uh, we had the whole thing of uh, Gus. The reason bringing him to his to that town that has to be uh, where Max was from, um, and Gus. We know he's from uh, uh, Chile, and we heard the whole story about the Kawati from his childhood. Uh, but if I remember correctly, uh, they did say that the first Poyos Hermanos was in, uh, Michoacan in Mexico. So, so yeah, but now we know, uh, that this is where, I mean, granted, we don't know the name of this town, uh, but this definitely has to be the town where Max was, because otherwise, why would you put, uh, why would you put that there? Why would you, you know, fund this town? But yeah. And it's interesting now to think about uh, back when they showed all the children and all the children running through with their really nice school uniforms and everything that, you know, that's that's to piece it together how much Gus is, you know, uh, financing this entire town, you know. There's not a lot. There's not a lot in this town. But even small town that this is has electricity as well, you know. And I think that has to be worth something. I mean... Now, maybe I don't know. Granted, I haven't been to many small towns in Mexico. If you live in a small town in Mexico, I was going to say let me know. But if you're watching this, that means you probably have it. So don't I look like a big white idiot? Oh, well. But yeah, I mean, there's got to be... I mean, there is a completely 100% functional fountain in the middle of it. Uh, in the middle of this small town. So yeah, it's like... Even though sort of like the structures and everything are you know, sort of more you know, classic, older old, older style, it is definitely a well-financed, decent place to live, you know? So, so yeah, and that's why, yeah, why would he do that if it, if it was not the town where Max grew up? And yeah, it's that, that is exactly the place where you can uh, sway Mike with the tale of revenge. Oh, so yeah, really, really good stuff. We're halfway through the season, halfway through the penultimate season. I'm excited to see where we are going in the second half and, of course, where we're going to be going in the final season. But we will just have to wait and see. With all that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.
Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist for all of my Better Call Saul reactions, as well as another video you can go click on. Oh, a playlist for Breaking Bad. What am I talking about? There's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.